Hi, this is Sam from Exam PA. In this video, you will learn how to choose the right model. Now, for PA, you have several different choices, and you're expected to be able to justify your reasons for using any particular one. This is very easy to understand using a simple graph. On the y-axis, you see the model interpretability. This is how easy it is to explain the model. On the x-axis, you see the model flexibility. This is how easily the model adjusts to changes in the data. If you are thinking of a linear regression model, one high, highly flexible model would have a lot of variables, whereas an inflexible model would have only a few variables. Another way to say this is that the, as the flexibility increases, the variance decreases. As the flexibility decreases, the bias increases. Now, you can plot all of our different models across this graph, starting in the upper left with low flexibility but high interpretability is a single decision tree. This, of course, can change depending on how deeply you tune the tree. Then there is the GLM with subset selection. This is a little bit higher bias than a regular GLM which uses all the variables because it's removing uh, variables or um, decreasing the flexibility or decreasing the variance. Then there's also the lasso and of course when you use the lasso penalty with the GLM which is the same as the L1 norm in an elastic net then what you are doing is um, removing variables by setting their coefficients equal to zero. Then, right in the center of this graph, you have the regular GLM. This is uh, the most moderate type of model on PA. This would just be a regular GLM that doesn't have a lot of engineered features or variable interactions. Uh, then you have the uh, ridge regression. Now, uh, the ridge regression is um, higher in flexibility than a GLM because it has an additional parameter, uh, the lambda parameter. This is where uh, the, um, the penalty for the model, also known as the loss function, um, is controlled not only by the, um, by the mean squared error, but also by the uh, size of the coefficients squared. And related to that is the you know, elastic net. That's where you have an additional hyperparameter, which is alpha. Of course, when you have you know, the lasso model that is fixing alpha, as well as when you have a ridge regression model that's fixing the value of alpha. But the elastic net is just leaving those two parameters uh, alpha and lambda to be anything at all. And then, so as you can see, as you add more of those parameters, you increase the flexibility of the model. And then finally, on the bottom right, you have the uh, most popular machine learning models, uh, bagging and boosting. Bagging is, of course, also known as a random forest model when the uh, component models or the weak learners are decision trees. And uh, boosting is known as a gradient boosted uh, machine or a gradient boosted tree when the weak learners are tree based models. These are the most powerful machine learning techniques that we have. They are able to fit a variety of problems and they can handle you know, a lot of problems that other models struggle with. Like just a few other points here. As you do increase the flexibility, you do need to be more careful that you're not overfitting. The way to do this is to use cross-validation. If you're just fitting a single decision tree, then it's okay to just use a single training set and a single test set, and then just um, you know, run a test and make sure that the error is about the same in both. However, it's not enough if you're doing that you know, with a more complex model, you really wanna use tenfold CV with 
uh, ideally two to five repeats. And the same is true when you're using an elastic net, which has those additional hyperparameters. Um, finally, when we're talking about interpretability, um, on PA, often you'll fit a complex model and then have to explain the result. And so what you can do is fit a simpler model and use that as your sort of explanation and then use your complex model if you have to make a prediction. So this video covered how you can choose the right model on exam PA. So hit the like button on this video and smash that subscribe button so that you'll be updated with all of the latest tips for exam PA.